Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Vince with Holy Pro, and thanks for coming. So, uh, I'm going to be talking about some of our hardware and some of the open standard that we, we have with PX with PixHawk and PX4. So, um, just want to start with the little fam little background of the family of the open source project. The PX4, while you guys are all here, we got. The MathLink project, UAV can now is changing to drone can on is splitting into drone can and then the PixHawk open hardware standard that we built our flight controller based on and Math SDK and Q ground control. And so so um, every couple of weeks, uh, drone code and and some of the other manufacturer meet up with the, the FMU working group. This calendar, if you need want to join, there's always, you can go on that link and there will be a calendar um, on when the PixHoc meeting would, would be. And some of the standard we we brought out was the, the 5, V5X standard, V6X standard, the connector standard, and the bus standard. So so let's say um, if other manufacturers follow the bus standard, they can use their baseboard with our flight controller, flight FMU module, and it's really um, uh, all compatible. So it's not you're not really stuck to one one uh, manufacturer. And if there's a baseboard that with that has um, different companion computer built in, you can just use our flight controller or someone else's flight controller and put it right on, and it would just work plug and play. And the connector standards. Basically, all the pinout or the G, let's, let's say GPS port, and it would uh, have a certain pinout, and you can just go swap to different con different flight controller with the same standard, and then you won't have to worry about uh, like how to wire them. It should be just really you just plug it in, and it will be good. And the the V6X standard is what our, one of our new flight controller follows. Uh, I'll show you in just one bit. And all these standards are really, it's on pixhawk.org and it's published on GitHub. And so in 2018, uh, we released the Pixhawk 4 with uh, Alterion. And it was a very successful flight controller, really brought um, something more, something affordable and low profile to the community. And after that, this is this follows the FMU V5 standard. And after that, we brought out in 2001, we brought out the Pixhawk 5X. It, it has like a it has a modular design. The, the hardware needs to be certified from the some of the Pixhawk, uh, some of the uh, PX4 consultant, and fully tested. This it uses the autopilot bus, Pixhawk autopilot bus standard. So this. The, the as you can see the the FMU module pull right out and you can put it with other baseboard if you want and and we offer the standard baseboard and we also will be releasing a, a different smaller one so um, this is the Pixhawk 6x and the main difference between this and the 5x is a faster H7 processor and it would allow you to do uh, it, 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 the processor goes up to 480 megahertz and allow developers to do more with PX4 and also uh, other firmware if, if needed. And it's the, the hardware certified and fully PX4 supported. And this will be released with a media baseboard. So a lot of fixed wing user they don't need the. The, uh, the header at the bottom, and there's a lot of space restriction. So we offer a different baseboard you can use, or you can use other companies' baseboard as long as they are PIX hot, um, autopilot bus. And these are on the left side. You see the, some of the technical spec, the H7, and there's an I/O processor and a bunch of different redundancy. So the three IMU with the invert sense and. Uh, a ma a internal mag and uh, two parameters. So, so for re triple redundancy and for safety and, and other reasons. And this is the mini baseboard that I was talking about. 
So because of the space restriction, we, we drop some of the, the, the ports. And you can see with the ports that we drop. And it comes with a PW, PW, PWM breakout board that you can mount in different location. If, um, let's say, if you might want to mount it in lower, uh, a different height or a different, different area, then you can put it wherever you want. And, and on the left side, you can see what kind of ports it support. It also works with the uh, previous uh, Pixar 5X or other, even other companies. And um, so some of the key design points is this of the 5X and 6X. The 6X has the, the new H7 processor. So more, very importantly, they have the, the modular design with the 100 pin and 50 pin um, Pixar autopilot bus connector, the tr triple redundancy of the IMU and double redundancy on the parameter sensor. And they're all separate on separate bus. So even if there's a, some hardware failure, so uh, it can continue operation. And they're on different power control and domain. As they're all isolated. And uh, an internal vibration isolating system. And as you can see on the, on the right side, they are uh, the IMU board the FMU board and the base board. And the IMU board and the, and the FMU M board is really one module itself. And it also has an Ethernet interface if you need um, to use Ethernet uh, peripheral or, or want to connect it to, connect it to a, a mission computer. It's also temperature control. So um, two of the IMU are temperature control so uh, in, in getting a more accurate reading when, when, is, when you start up and also in colder environment. So the chip shortage. And I, I don't know how many of you have uh, been paying attention to the price and the, the stock issue uh, of these flight controllers. So either they're out of stock or they're very expensive. So it depends, depending on your company. But for most um, DIY users, if you need to buy a $500 autopilot to get started, so that's, that is very too much. So we were trying to come up with a solution. Even the 6X, um, they're going to be limited quantity because, because of uh, the chip shortage. So, so we are bringing out a new design. Is we call it the 6C. The C really stand for consumer or, or cost effective. And it's in, in uh, the design is, all, I guess, an all-in-one all design. It doesn't have the modular form factor. And a lot, of, a lot of users don't really need the modular form factor because they, because the form factor, the modular form factor itself adds a bit of money in the manufacturing, especially um, we add in the connector, add in the, the, the case, and and all, all kind of stuff. So this one also has the H7 processor, but it's a different H7 model. It's the same. It's the same uh, clock speed, same RAM, and same memory, but it has a lower pin count. So to, in order to do that, we drop, had to drop out some of the the ports that, that support like the Ethernet, SPI port, and uh, AD and IO port, and one of the UART. And it, it has these sensor set, and we chose some of these sensor set because of the cost. And but these because of the chip shortage, it might might change in the future. And this this design has like a lower profile design. It used analog power module, and a lot of people were complaining how uh, the X series needs the digital power module, and there's not a lot in the market. And also due to chip shortage. So, so we kind of going back a little bit using the analog power module. So uh, for people that use 14s or 12s, we have those support and we uh, we sell those power module too. So it has a double IMU redundancy and uh, but only one parameter. And uh, the target that it uses the FMU V6C target that will be fully supported by PX4. And this one and the 6X, um, the release date is uh, very soon. This, I, really, I was really hoping to get it out this today, but um, it, this is looking like in a week or two, and the 6X should be in, uh, in a few days. And other, we talk about baseboard, and this is one of the baseboard we, I show last year. 
and it has a we put it on the project on hold because of the of course chip shortage and th this has a raspberry pi cm4 inside integrated and heat sink and a fan and all and they can use pixar 5x or 6x or other other companies uh fmu module and removable case so so we we plan to to release it with a cm4 and without a cm4 so maybe some user already has a cm4 or maybe it's easier to get it in your country but right right now in china the cm4 is the price is a little bit higher than what it used to be so um so if there's any feedback on this uh, let me know and we are planning on releasing this sometime in the next couple months but definitely nothing is set in stone on this and so last year we, we talked about we also talked about the dev kit and and also do the chip shortage issue we, we kind of put the project on hold like the telemetry radio wasn't in stock and and either the flight controller wasn't in stock so but i think and uh, but 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 still all the stuff inside the dev kit you can order really separately but um so the, the what we call these px4 dev kit is we want to really have a have a kit that has everything you need almost almost everything you need to to get started with px4 and we were working on what what is really important to have in this kit that is low cost and good for like maybe students or people that wanted to get involved first time and um, and also you if you wanted to mount a certain uh, companion computer on the drone then there's there is a, a place where you can just mount it without um, without 3D the printing or designing your own your own mount or um, making your own carbon fiber. So so then we last year I showed this picture. We, this is the X two uh, X five hundred V two frame, and and also a little 3D printed mount in the front. And you can put we have holes already on the on the mount where you can put all the different different depth sensor depth camera and and such and the silk telemetry radio it was out of stock for a very long time and it's coming back very soon so coming back probably next week and this kit itself is um we're trying to keep it low price uh, without the flight controller of course camera and the radio the, just the almost ready to fly is i think a 200 a little over 200 dollars is just right there in the front and I haven't set we haven't set the price on the whole thing yet. And and the Pixhawk flight controller on top will will uh, use the six C because uh, th that would actually be the one that would be more widely available in in the future because the uh, the model of the H seven itself is more widely available. And these um, in the back of the drone we have this platform where it has already holds on the carbon fiber to mount a, a Jets, an NVIDIA Jetson Nano, uh, a Raspberry Pi Model um, Model B, and other other installation, other things that you need are really um, like the screws and the spacers standoff are all inside the, the kit. And uh, I think this is just a quick video on what, what really inside. So this is the the top plate, the bottom plate with the uh, power distribution board, and and this is the camera strap. Just snap right on um, the depth camera mount for different different cameras, and these are the platform board for GPS or uh, companion computer. Slide right on, and um, it's try to create it so it is really quick to install and i know there are um there are some pre-built drones out there but the cost is actually um more than what a lot of like new user or student can afford and we trying to keep it low cost and with making it solderless so we use these uh, xt30 
power to uh, connector to power the, the ESC. The ESC already built in. The motor, the motor already installed on the arm already, and try to fix, make it a make it a um, dumb proof. At least try it. Uh, yeah, this is this is also another demo. Then on on on, on the installation. I think it, it it takes about maybe twenty to thirty minutes to install, with, depending on what you put on top. So uh, I guess uh, if. I don't know how many of you seen this, but but we are always welcome for feedback improvement, and uh, with, uh, it's really it's just a work in progress for for something low cost and easy to install. And I know there are like complaints about the legs being too fragile, or or um, used used to be not having like the motor direction sign, so, so new user would would install incorrectly, and that maybe take out a day of their time. And we, we try to we we put those stickers on top to try to eliminate that. Yeah, so that's just a quick uh, introduction or actually um, display on some of the the new stuff that we have. I have them up here if you want to take a look. And uh, you can always find me at vp at holybro.com. Very simple, very easy email to to remember and or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And. Uh, I guess I have a bunch of t-shirts on in the front if you guys are interested in hats and uh, any questions um, so the, the the almost ready to fly itself is um, 250 I think just right there and then if you add the flight controller is um, so I Depends on if you get the remote control radio or not. That's going to be a selection, and the remote controller itself is I think about uh, hundred some two hundred dollar. So if you have your own radio, you get the uh, flight controller, power module, and and this setup here. I, it would be a little around around five hundred, a little over five hundred, around five hundred dollar. That um, but that's that's uh we will put that up on our web on our store. And that 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 price is going to be plus or minus fifty, maybe. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So uh, please come up if you want some one of the T-shirt I'm wearing. If not, uh, if the size is a little off, it's uh, actually Asian sizing. So what I wear usually medium is extra large. So, <laughs> so if if uh, that's three XL, that's usually uh, extra large in the U.S. So two XL is a large. So two two size up. Try it, tr try it out, and and then you can always swap them. 